talk about. Um, she's quite poor. Hello and welcome, my name is Ian and this channel is all about music and art and in this series of videos we've been looking at what is happening regarding the music streaming in the UK. The UK Government's Digital Culture, Media and Sports Committee have been looking into the ways that streaming platforms and large record companies manage payments to songwriters, musicians and performers. And on the 15th of October 2020, Parliament published a news article stating that the Digital Culture, Media and Sports Committee were going to inquire into the impact of the streaming on the future of the music industry. This article stated that the inquiry would consider whether the government should take action to protect the industry from piracy in the wake of steps taken by the EU on copyright and intellectual property rights. Now I knew that some high profile musicians and music industry types were going to be giving evidence to the committee. And the first of these meetings was on the 24th of November 2020. And it continued through December into January and February of this year, 2021. Now these were long meetings lasting over three hours. So what I've done is I've edited them all down into shorter videos and you can find a link to all the previous meeting videos in the description down below. I've also created an introduction for each section and if you want to, you can skip straight past those bits to the questions by clicking on the timestamps. Again, all of this stuff is in the description. The Digital Cultural Media and Sports Committee held another oral evidence session on the 22nd of March 2021. And this time the committee were looking inwards into their ministerial session, asking evidence from two ministers and official experts. And I'll let Ju the chair, Julian Knight, introduce the guests in a moment. And it's just worth mentioning that there was an open letter written to Boris Johnson last week from 156 musicians, including Paul McCartney, Gary Barlow, Kate Bush and other high profile musos. Now, the letter stated that for, for too long, streaming platforms, record labels and other Internet giants have exploited performers and creators without rewarding them fairly. We must put the value of music back where it belongs in the hands of the music makers. And as the Digital Cultural Media and Sports Committee are now writing their, their final report, we can only hope that something good will come out of this. But I'll put a link to the full letter in the description down below if you wanted to read it. All of these sessions were chaired by Julian Knight and the complete list of committee members and relevant links are in the description down below. This recording is made in agreement with the UK Parliament terms and conditions which states that I cannot alter the video or audio of the recording in any way. I can't use the material for satire or use it on a website or social media platform that promotes, encourages or facilitates illegal activity or encourages hatred and antisocial behaviour. So here is part two from the 22nd of March 2021 into the economics of music streaming. I committed the cardinal sin of not muting, unmuting myself. Uh, Kevin Brennan. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. And I'll, I'll come back to the, the, the exchange that uh, Steve just had in, in a moment. Carol, Caroline, can, do you think that it's a fair reflection of the creative process that streaming currently pays out 55% of streaming revenue to the recording copyright, of which the record label takes the vast majority when radio broadcast splits revenues between the recording and the song copyright holders 50-50. In other words, you know, shouldn't the song be worth a bit more when it's streamed? Um, well, this is this is this goes to the heart of the of the of the question, doesn't it, as to as to what the fair split is? And I don't really think it's um, I, I don't really think I'm qualified to be able to make that judgment. Not least because from listening to the evidence sessions that you guys have had so far, the music industry themselves are very divided on okay. on this question. But okay. you know, I do think what. But in answer to that, that a little bit further, Kevin, what I would say is I do think that there's a lot more space here for the music industry, the sector, to work more collaboratively together to come to a a, a conclusion which suits everybody a little bit better. Okay, and and as you probably noticed in the sessions, there's there's been some concern that 
part of the reason why it's developed in that way might be to do with competition issues within the uh, within the music industry itself. But I don't want to press that at, at this stage. Um, I, I want to ask you one other thing, and that is that currently non-featured artists, um, session musicians, backup singers, and, and so on, they don't receive any remuneration when a song is streamed, um, unlike when it's broadcast or on television or, or on the radio. Do you think that situation is fair? And again, uh, something that that uh, stakeholders seem to have wildly different views on. So I wouldn't want to comment myself on what, what is and isn't fair, but it does seem that there's a disparity, as you've very clearly articulated, between what happens on the radio and what happens on streaming. And uh, and yet the, the contribution of all the talented uh, artists that uh, are, are on that um, are, are on that piece of music uh, is not different so yeah yeah okay all right th thanks um I do want to come back though to to you Tim what you were just uh, saying earlier uh, with regard to uh, the current copyright regime being fit for purpose because clearly this is you know an important matter in relation to this inquiry and perhaps if I could play devil's advocate for a moment and suggest you and suggest to you that it's totally unfit for purpose because the major corporations would tend to argue that streaming replaces traditional sales and that's why uh you know as the dominant as a dominant system if you like for accessing music the making available right that that, that you referred to earlier on and 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 that's their argument therefore it's justifiable that their contracts for exclusive rights to recorded music are wholly applied to streaming. That's that's the essence, isn't it, of their argument? I think there are a number of arguments in this space, and I think there are a number of issues. Um, I, I, think I know, but I'm asking you whether you think that's the essence of their argument. I'll, 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 I want to pursue this a bit first before we dilate. Uh, I absolutely, have, very happy to pursue this. But I think there are clear copyright issues and then contract issues and potentially competition issues. And but I'm so right in saying, aren't I? Don't, don't go down the competition route yet. I'm right in saying, aren't I, that basically... The argument is that streaming replaces traditional sales, physical sales largely. It's, it's how revenue has been drawn back into the recorded music industry with the decline of physical sales, uh, you know, which were hit by piracy in the digital age. And therefore, that, that's the argument why they, they, their contracts for exclusive rights to recorded music can be wholly applied to streaming. Uh, the, the marketplace has certainly changed uh, from a physical sales to, to a, a streaming environment. Um, isn't, it, and isn't it also the case that streaming is, as well as replacing physical sales, is also replacing radio? And that, in fact, it is the stated corporate policies of the major streaming platforms to do exactly that, to replace radio and to get the revenue, advertising revenue across the world, that radio currently enjoys because streaming can offer a sort of radio-like experience for uh, people who pay their 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 streaming subscription. And isn't it, and I'm, 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 aren't I right in saying that Daniel Eck and Spotify have openly stated that that is their corporate objective? I, I'm, I, it's not for me to comment on the corporate objectives of, of streaming. I'm not asking you to comment. I'm just asking, but, but I'm right in saying that, though, aren't I? Uh, what I can look at this is, you know, my responsibility is to look at this from a copyright perspective, and we're very clear how the different different uh, business models and the different environments sit from a copyright perspective, and very clear that the making available right links to the streaming industry and was designed with that that industry in mind. How but the industry you... has changed is is a, yeah. is a separate issue. Yeah. Well, it's not because I mean you've just said that um, that that that's the case, but the point I'm making is this: that well, are you aware first of all that, that Spotify's stated and other streaming services stated sort of intention that they intend to largely replace radio as part of their, their uh, way of becoming profitable. I, I heard the comment on, I, I heard the comment on the, the committee session the other day uh, and the answer from uh, the, the gentleman from um, Horatio, I think from, from, from Spotify. So I'm aware okay. of it in that context. Okay. So if streaming does that, and uh, if if Spotify is successful in doing that, and as as you say, you heard them say it to our committee that that is their corporate policy, then that will reduce the value, won't it? If they if they take listeners from radio, that will reduce the value of the secondary rights, which Parliament decided way back in the 1980s and has subsequently extended in legislation since. That was under Mrs. Thatcher's government way back in the 1980s. It decided 
that there should be secondary rights that should go to musicians when the music they create is communicated to the public under the communicating to the public right, i.e. when it's played on the radio. That's right, isn't it? If, if streaming replaces radio, then that right will wither on the vine and disappear. There are there are differences in the uh, so the communication to the public and the, that broadcasting right and the making available right. I think the, the important difference to the also make uh, around this is the making available is an exclusive right, whereas on the broadcasting one, the rights holder actually cannot control that broadcast. The broadcast can broadcast whatever they like, and the rights holder cannot control what is broadcast. Whereas yeah, on an but, exclusive but, but right, but making it, available, they do have the control. The truth is the only control they have on Spotify is that they've agreed to license the rights, in effect, to to the streaming service. They're not in control of, of what is played and when it's played. In fact, an algorithm often decides, often the consumer isn't necessarily in control, just as listening to radio. But what, when you said what's important, the one I just said is important. If you were a musician and you your pension relied on you, having played on a recording many years ago, being able to get some, as it's known, equitable remuneration from that music being played, that would be important to you, wouldn't it? That uh, radio is is in effect being replaced by streaming, and you'll no longer get a penny when the music you helped to create is streamed. Wouldn't that be? Isn't that important? From, and shouldn't it be something you're thinking about? Uh, from a, from a, an intellectual property and copyright perspective, making sure that the there are clear rights that associate with the different ways that music are, uh, are used is the, the important element. In terms of what is happening, in terms of the market changing, uh, you know, that that is for that is not part of the intellectual property regime. We need to make sure there are clear so rights that are associated with the different. It's not about the market the different... changing, is it? It's not about the market changing. What it's about is a technology, a new technology, that you say has been treated in a particular legal way so far so far right you seem to be you seem to think copyright law needs to be rigid for all time it's been treated in a particular way so far but the implications of that technology are now becoming very very clear for the livelihoods of a large group of people who parliament decided should get secondary rights when their music is communicated to the public i.e played on a radio and and so on and we've heard throughout this inquiry the way in which streaming in many ways it's becoming more and more analogous to the experience of music being played on a radio. And so if people are going to end up getting nothing from their music being played by this trend, I suppose the question I'm asking is, is, is not what the current situation is, is isn't that something that you as the chief executive of the intellectual property office should be thinking about and should be discussing with ministers as to whether or not the original intentions of Parliament and the original intentions of the government headed by Mrs. Thatcher in the 1980s are gradually being eroded in a way because of this new technology and that it's something that should be seriously addressed. Isn't that a reasonable conclusion for any reasonable person to draw from that information? Certainly, we need to ensure that the copyright framework in the UK is fit for purpose and reacts to changes that are going on. That's exactly why the Making Available Right was introduced, and that is one that is, is underpinned by international treaties. It's not just a UK issue. This is something that, it, that sits with the various international treaties around copyright. So as things change, yes, mm -hmm. we need to make sure that the copyright regime is yeah. fit for purpose. The UK has a great copyright regime, and yeah. we do need to understand how things, we, how the things we, change over time and make sure that it it is fit for purpose. We do. And I'm telling you that the communicating to the public right, which is another part of your copyright responsibilities, is being eroded by this process. And making available may be great and it may be part of an international treaty, but if they're communicating to the public right, i.e. the reward, the secondary rights that go to musicians through their music being played, is being eroded, that that's something that there should be some more urgent concern about. And frankly, I'm slightly disturbed by the fact that that isn't something that you've said to the committee is a very, very active consideration for the intellectual property office. Can I just ask you about the survey um, that's being undertaken by the, uh, the intellectual property office, which I asked the Secretary of State about some months ago, the research into creator earnings yep. uh, and, uh, at the IPO. And he made it clear when he spoke to the committee that he wanted everyone in the music industry to contribute hard data to that work that you're doing. How's that going? 
that that process is 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 moving forward, and we expect the research to conclude sometime in the summer. Um, we're re- really pleased that this is, is ongoing because one of the key areas in this space is a lack of really good evidence and data to mm. understand what's happening from creators earnings. And that's why we're working with across industry with a number, a number of partners across the industry to look at saying, how can we get good solid data to underpin uh, you know, f- future Agreed. thinking in this area? Agreed. So and and have, we're, have, we're all, supporting it and have all and the major, la- have all the major labels contributed evidence to you and have the digital Streaming platforms, the, the major ones, all contributed evidence to you in the way that the Secretary the, of State said that the, they should? The, the research is ongoing, uh, and we look forward to the results that come out in the summer. Sorry, um, that is a complete attempt not to answer the question. Have they contributed evidence? I do not have the detail around that because I'm not directly involved in that piece of research because it's independent research of which we are party to it, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't would look at the details would, on that until, it, until the research is concluded. So you're saying that that's being kept secret at the moment, whether it's, or not it's, it's they independent have research. Any evidence. It's independent research that we are that we we are supporting in terms of investing it here and and from that point of view. Mm-hmm. But it's independent research, and it's not. So it's independent research you've commissioned and paid for, but are not prepared to tell the select committee uh, whether or not the major players who the secretary of state said should contribute evidence to that to that um, piece of research have actually done so. That it, as I said, this is independent research. It's not for me to be involved in that detailed research. We allow it to carry its, 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 its journey through that research. Yes, it's something we're supporting, investing with other partners to ensure the research can go forward. And we really look forward to the evidence that comes out of it, um, which will help inform this really important debate. Well, given, and we the, hope to have given, that, given the fact that the, that the lack of transparency is the major complaint that many artists and music creators brought to us about this whole subject area, the fact that you can't even tell us whether or not the uh, the major players in this, who the Secretary of State in front of this committee strongly said should be open, transparent and contribute to this research, quite frankly, I think speaks volumes uh, well, for what the, one of the central problems is. I think you should write to the committee. I'm not asking you to interfere in the research, its findings or the end of it, because I'm sure those, the, the people doing that research are doing it in in an entirely proper manner. But I think you should be prepared to commit to write to to ask the researchers if they'd be willing to share with us who has contributed evidence, because it's difficult for us to draw our conclusions in this inquiry if we don't know whether or not that research you're doing is being actively supported by the major labels and by the digital streaming platforms, because it's an important part of whether or not the transparency we think should some people think should be happening is actually going ahead. So would you be willing to con- to contact the researchers and ask them if they'd be willing to share with us the list of those organisations that have contributed evidence, even if that is on a private basis? Uh, I'd be happy to ask ask the research. I know the steering group that re- is on that represents a very broad range of organisations, including the Ivers Academy, BPI, FAC, PRS for Music, AIM, Musicians Union, and MPA. So they're on the steering group. None of those are on the list of organisations I just asked you about. No, but they are responsible for ensuring that we have a good broad range of research here and that the, the research is asking the right questions. But I will happily uh, ask the, the, the researchers that the question that you've asked. Thank you. Back to you, Chair. Thank you. Mr Moss, can I just check, what was the deadline for labels to provide you with data in this report, for this research? What was the deadline? Uh, I, I don't have that information because I said I'm not okay. involved in the detail of the research. All right. Just, just as a, a little aside, you come in front of a parliamentary search committee to do with music streaming. What do you think we were going to ask you about? Do you think it was going to be water sports? I mean, this is something which is absolutely germane to your role. And you've come in front of us, frankly, and, and offered absolutely no details. I'll, I'll be absolutely clear to you, Mr. Boss. I expect that letter to be arriving within the next seven days. And the committee will not want to know precisely the number of organisations that have contributed and also what was the deadline for the data. We need openness and transparency about this matter. As you said yourself, there isn't a great deal of it uh, in the subject area. So we do expect better than this. So uh, I think we'll move on. Damien Green. Uh, thank you, Julian. Um, I, I want to chat. I haven't misunderstood something Uh, the impression i got from the last few minutes is that it is the i assume the government's contention 
that the current copyright regime is entirely satisfactory uh, in the context of, of music and reward for uh, creative people. Um, and you know, we all know that the Copyright Act dates back to the 1980s, uh, you know, long decades before Spotify was invented. So can someone, and particularly from the DCMS perspective, so either, either Caroline or Robert, I mean, is, is that the case? That broadly speaking, does the government think the copyright regime works at the moment? I'll kick that off. Um, and before I do, can I just um, draw the committee's attention to the fact that it's it's um, it's related to what Kevin was just asking, although not um, not the answer that he was particularly pressing for is the fact that um, my department, DCMS, but not me. So um, my colleague, John Whittingale, who's the Minister for uh, Media and Data, is currently doing a review of radio of, of, of radio stations and, and radio airplay. So um, that might help contribute towards uh, your committee. Uh, research. Uh, more broadly, you know, uh, Damien, that's why this piece of work is is ongoing with the IPO uh, to try and, and get a stronger handle on how this is working, because we know that um, I mean, actually right across the this whole issue, while there are contractual arrangements between the rights holders and the streaming platforms. And of course, you know, in many cases, that's a private matter. We 100% recognise that artists and creators need to be fairly remunerated for the work that they do. And that's never been more important than now, given the just extraordinary times that we're living through. COVID-19 has been so hard on the music sector, particularly for those who make most of their money from playing live to their audiences. So we absolutely know how vital it is that they get fair remuneration from uh, every aspect of their work. And actually, we know how vital the music industry is for people's um, well-being and entertainment and how it's got us through this last 12 months, and which is, you know, gives us even more of a reason why we need to get this right. Thanks. And Robert, when you were answering questions from, from Damien Hines, um, you, you said that you thought it was satisfactory in, in the specific uh, instance that, that, that Damien had, had suggested. Um, do I divine from that there are other parts where you think it could be improved? Um, hello, Mr. Green, and nice to see you again, too. Um, I think it was an answer to Mr. Brian, actually, that I, I gave that uh, response rather than, than Damien Hines. Um, I, I, I mean, I think... Um, the copyright, the copyright legislative framework is only one aspect that's relevant uh, in this in this whole debate. And actually, um, to support my colleagues from from the IPO, they have been active in trying to um, update and reform the broader copyright environment to keep pace with developments. And you may be coming on to talk about piracy and the related enforcement, for example, which has been very uh, very important in this in this broader context. Clearly, there is a debate um, uh, um, in Europe and elsewhere about the appropriateness of copyright legislation, and the EU adopted a new copyright uh, directive, the, the Digital Services Market Directive, which introduced a number of, of new provisions. Um, as you know, the United Kingdom hasn't um, uh, implemented that directive because of uh, how it fell in relation to our departure from the the EU, but it's also clear that the um, the implementation of that directive in Europe um, has its own challenges, and uh, we have got the opportunity to observe and monitor how that is done before we take any decisions about the future of our own uh, copyright regime, which, as Tim uh, said, uh, is widely respected around the world. I think that's really interesting because in, in the last parliament, ministers said that they supported the aims of the EU directive. Um, and I thought that the government had decided not to develop an equivalent in the UK. Um, is it now the position that the government's going to sort of look and wait and see what happens in Europe before it decides whether or not it needs to develop an equivalent? Um, I, or Caroline. Shall I kick this off and then Robert will um, will uh, sweep up after me? Um, so you know, as Robert says, you know, we do have one of the best copyright frameworks in the world, but and th th there were mixed views on the copyright directive because it was supported by some sections of the music industry, but in actual fact, it was um, opposed by 
others and actually by some in the wider creative industry so people like the film industry and uh, with my other hat on the digital hat with some of the technology firms so we're there's a lot of work ongoing at the moment to um, to to look at this. Some of the measures in the directive actually weren't subject to an impact assessment. They were very broadly drafted. So uh, from memory, Articles 18 and 22, uh, which is about um, appropriate and proportionate remuneration rights, uh, uh, both of these were added at a very late stage in negotiations by the European Parliament. And so uh, we're just looking very carefully at the implementation of the directive in Europe and leaving the EU gives us the opportunity to be able to do that and to decide how we move forward. Exactly. Uh, Robert, uh, the Minister has correctly said that, um, I mean, as I know for my own benefit in the past, you are one of the great sweepers up uh, of, of potential issues. Uh, what, what, are, what are the issues with the copyright directive that we might want to look at again? I wasn't prepared for such accolades uh, today. Um, I really think I should give, I should allow my colleagues from the from the IPO and BASE to answer that because it's not uh, deep legislation that, that DCMS uh, owns. Sorry to get into the sort of departmental silos, uh, but th that is the fact. I'm happy to come in if that's helpful. Okay. But my, my lights have gone out. Unfortunately, oh, they're, they're, I've moved. They've they've come back. That that's okay. So so look, um, one. I'm sure again, Tim will come in with a little bit more detail and sweep up on this. But I, I think it's it's like um, Minister Dinger just just said actually that what when we looked at this, and I have held uh, stakeholder meetings around around the uh, directive, and it did it did seem as though um, certain people felt there were strengths within it and then other there were other issues uh, for, for example in the, in the film industry and there, there were particular issues around around this so so one of the things that we we've, we've agreed to do is um, look and as you rightly say have a look at what is happening in the EU and see where we find our situation rather than making a decision at haste and we believe that this will actually strengthen what we're able to do and have a look and will we'll really satisfy the needs of our stakeholders more, more fully. Because whilst some uh, felt that this was, a, say, a, a strong thing to have, we, we're really mindful that it needs to hit the whole of the, of, of the sector. But Tim may have very specific examples in terms of uh, th those points. Jim? Thank you, uh, and certainly agree with the, the comments that have just just been made. That you know that the, the directive um, was a, a real compromise around a number of issues, um, and there is a real opportunity now to to look at you know what is really appropriate for the UK, and especially the sort of the, the unique opportunity to see how this is being implemented in twenty seven other states. Um, these are really complex areas. There was a lot of compromise, and we are aware from some of our discussions with others that there are some difficulties in trying to implement this. So it'd be great for us to be able to look at that uh, and then look at some of the specific issues that we, we in more detail and see what is appropriate for the UK building on our, uh, our really good copyright regime. So that gives us two questions. My, my two final questions are: one, how long are we going to sit and see how it goes in Europe? What's what's the sort of plan? Um, and secondly, and, and we've had evidence in this committee that, that for instance, the Spanish regime uh, is in some ways uh, preferable for uh, for creatives. Um, so are we not worried that we might get left behind uh, in the UK by other economies in terms of making our creative economy friendly to the people doing the, doing the creative work? I, I think um, in the... 27 Euro European countries have until the 7th of June to implement the directive. So we're not talking that far away in terms of the, the measures they need to implement. So um, certainly we want to look and see what they're doing. Uh, and we're watching uh, the developments in that very, very closely at the moment. I think within regards to the, the, the issue in Spain, where I think they uh, especially linking to the making available, uh, right? And then there's an additional one that, which links to fair remuneration. Um, that is something that we want to look at in more, more detail. I've had some evidence say actually that can do, that can increase complexity of the regime um, because you've got a two, a, a two rights working together and actually seeing where that works in practice and gives a better deal for those within the whole of that music industry is something that we, we want to look at um, and certainly you know, um, look at the detail that comes through. 
So, I mean, are we expecting if we have a change in this parliament or can we put any kind of time scale on it? I suspect it's a more question for, for ministers than... Uh, yeah, I, I, if I may, I mean, my, my view would very much be let's make sure we get it right. Um, I can't give you a, a time scale at the moment, but I'm sure. But when we when we are satisfied, I mean, um, one of the things Tim, Tim and I have have a regular monthly meeting, and I'll certainly ensure that we bring it up at our next meeting and try and, and get a, a deadline for you. And if we can, then I will let you know. But I think the key thing on this is we absolutely need to have a look and make sure that we are getting it right. This is an opportunity to do that, and and so therefore it might take a little bit longer than, I don't, I don't know what your time scale would, would, would be on this, but I'd certainly rather get it right than rush it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Damien. Kevin Brennan just wants to come in with one quick question before I go to Clive Efford. Kevin? Uh, yeah, oh, thank you, Chair. Just sorry, Tim, uh, just to check something that you said earlier. Uh, you said that the making available right was introduced in response to streaming. Um, that's was- not correct, is it? It was introduced to deal with things like streaming. It was, I think, it was introduced it was, back it was in two thousand and one to deal with digital downloads, wasn't it? Because it, it was introduced interna- as an international concept in the nineteen nineties and into UK law in two thousand and three, five years before Spotify existed. Am I right factually in saying that? I believe you're right in saying that it was linked to, I said, changes within the internet and the way that music was being you know, of which streaming will be one of them. Sorry, Chair, back to you. Thank you. So thanks so much for watching. The next video will be a continuation of this session. And if you like what I do, could I encourage you to subscribe and ding that little bell so that you know when I post new content. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.